Okay, I'm going to tell you about where Bowbird came from. Um, it was actually funded by the Atlas of Living Australia. And the Atlas of Living Australia uh, was a large government agency funded to build a website, to build a portal that aggregated all of the museum data and all of the herbaria data. Now, the reason they wanted to be able to do that was the kind of archetypal question that we could ask, say, show me the distribution of a koala, and then lay on top of that the distribution of its food plant. Now, over the next 50 years, model a 0.5, a 2, or a 5 degree change in temperature and see how those distributions change. Now, imagine if you began modeling the koala and the plant with one record. You'd have not much of a model at all. Imagine if you had 10,000 records of the koala and 10,000 records of the plant. Then you begin to get good models because you're talking about a lot of time and space. So the Atlas of Living Australia is desperate to be able to put more dots on maps, to be able to make better distribution, to be able to make better models. And that's why Bowbird was made, so that people going out taking photographs of koalas, of, of plants, of insects, can put dots on maps. And that's what it's all about. So every record on Bowbird finishes up on the scientific national data aggregator for biodiversity. And scientists use it every day to be able to predict future climate change and also to be able to make better policy decisions for, for us.